the screen there. If you're watching this, you can scan that QR code. It'll take you to the website at strongest.app. You can download it for uh, Apple right now. Not available yet for Android, but I think they are working on that. Uh, Strongest helps you attain a higher level of fitness and achieve more goals by reverse engineering the desired end state of each workout and delivering step-by-step training guidance to ensure you reach that end state. It's the only app with personalized pacing guidance that reverse engineers a timeline to guarantee that you achieve a specific goal in service to your training plan. So what you can do is if you're doing a workout like Fran, all the benchmark workouts are in this app. All the hero workouts are in this app. You can tell it, okay, I want to hit Fran in five minutes. That's going to be my, I want to do that or four and a half, whatever your goal is. And you can tell how, tell it how you want to break it up each set. And the app will give you a pace that you need to maintain in order to hit that. It tells you exactly how long you need to work when you need rest. It's, awesome stuff they also have all kinds of workout programs on there you know workouts you can select if you're on the road uh, if you're someone who works at home all kinds of great plans i got like zombie fit you know, oh yeah trains you to survive the zombie apocalypse which it, is fantastic it's, it's very straightforward mm-hmm. um training is stuff that you can do at home as well which i, I really like um, it, it gives you a lot of great data like you can pair it to your apple watch if you have that and it'll learn from your data yeah, as well. It's, it's a really cool app and matthew russell the guy who put it together is still you know working on this thing and just wants as many people to get a hold of it as, he, as they can right now. Give them his, their feedback so he can continue to make this thing better. So go check it out. Strongest.app. Download it for Apple right now. Again, an Android version I think is being worked on. Uh, but it's free. Check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. Uh, and, yeah, we're just trying to help him get the get the word out. So we'll leave the, the QR code up there uh, for a little bit before we bring Jacob Hepner on here. But it's strongest.app. And, yeah, check it out, man. There's just... A lot of fun bells and whistles and things that you can do there, uh, pacing workouts, choosing workouts. And, you know, you got a benchmark coming up in, in your regular class. Uh, you can figure out how to PR it. It'll tell you how to do it. Give so, you pacing and everything. Mm-hmm. Fantastic stuff. Strongest.app. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let's bring in our guest for today. He is, again, the two-time National Tactical Games Champion, Jacob Hepp. Whoa. <laughs> he brought his own... Th- Intro music. I love it. My drum, my drum skills. Came That's to you, fantastic. Sir. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you guys? Oh, we're wonderful, man. We're wonderful. Uh, good, well, we would good. be better if Winston was here. What the heck, Jacob? That's why we Literally, brought you on. I was in the, the back door <laughs> backstage, and I was right. like, man, I should grab him. He's right. See him right there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's relaxed. What up, Winston? Hey, Cheech. Oh, oh, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, show was made. <laughs> yep, we got, we got dog sightings. Fantastic. So for people who don't know, you just competed at the Tactical Games, won it again. And this is something that is really, this that sport has really started taking off for the past couple of years. I think it's probably where CrossFit was, I don't know, maybe 13 years ago, something, something like that. How did you get into yeah. it? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so it's actually currently, I'll give the sport its, its kudos for what it's do is it is actually currently the fastest growing shooting sport, um, shooting genre sport by like a lot. Um, it makes by quite a bit. It is very fast growing, um, at least in the shooting sport industry. I, I don't know the comparison for the fitness side of things because it's not really, while it is a fitness sport, like, you're not going to have a fitness person show up and be like, I want to compete, and then be like, oh, I need a gun. I can't compete anymore kind of perspective. So it is a shooting sport for sure, but it is the fastest growing. Huh. So, and and uh, I know that you have always been a fan of shooting sports and just shooting in general. So it seemed like, at least from my perspective, that once you started stepping away from competing in CrossFit, this, this was kind of like a natural marriage of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So I had, I had, I had made a decision like in – 2020 2020 was a weird year <laughs> for a lot of different reasons <laughs> yeah. um and uh i was yelled at because i wasn't wearing a mask i was biking and so um <laughs> i decided uh hey you know what like i'll finish this season out but there are definitely some other sports out there because like in the grand scheme of things like crossfit really prepares you for stinking everything mm. if i'm being honest you know you're not going to be you know like old crossfit is like i'm not going to go compete in a marathon and win but i'll probably i'm not going to get last i can go do an Ironman. I won't win, but I won't get last perspectively is kind of the concept behind it. It's probably a bad example. Um, but, uh, I really decided I could try other sports and this sport had piqued my interest for a few years. Um, and, and Tommy's correct. I had shot before, um, and owned firearms, but it wasn't something I competed in. So it's like saying, it's a good example. It's like saying, Oh, Tommy, 
you drive a car, you could probably be a race car driver. And you quickly <laughs> realize, and at first you're like, oh yeah, I do drive a Prius, man. I can rock this race car track. <laughs> and, and then you realize yeah. it's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. How dare you, Prius? <laughs> I drive a Subaru, I, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, it, hey, I, I drive a Subaru. I own a Prius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I had shot, you know, grew up shooting most of my life, and uh, that's a completely different ball game when you start competing. Very, that's kind of a really good example. Man, what a great metaphor, Jacob, with racing and driving a Prius. And so I'm going <laughs> to use that in the future. But <laughs> re quickly realized, really quickly, that hey, this is n not the same thing. Um, and so I'm going to have to teach myself how to race, right? How to shoot competitively. And that was, um, a long road and I'm not even remotely close to that, but the beauty of what CrossFit teaches you is if Lauren decides, you know, does the open workout, does the games and f figures out, man, I freaking suck at rowing. Like she can absolutely go off and get a CrossFit coach. And, and some CrossFit coaches are going to be really good. Like, you know, like the Ben Bergeron's in the past were really, um, kind of like a one-stop shop for a lot of help but most athletes nowadays will go find spokes in a wheel right they'll say okay well, if i want to be a fully robust athlete that's able to accomplish a lot of different genres of our sport i need to find spokes in this wheel to support me and make me a balanced athlete so laura will probably go off and find a chris henshaw or someone you know a shane farmer someone who's really going to help her out in that aerobic capacity area and this in this case this instance rowing and so that's exactly what CrossFit had taught us throughout many, many years, Olympic lifting coach, swimming coach, yada, 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 you name it. And so I did the same thing when I came to this sport. As I said, wow, Hepner, you suck at half this sport, <laughs> like badly. So let's go find some people who can make you suck less, essentially. Oh. Right. Well, and kind of speaking to that, I mean, the first year that you competed with tactical games, <clears throat> like you said, you had training with shooting. You obviously were an incredible athlete, but you can't be a mediocre shooter and a great athlete to have you carry through and be really good at the sport. So what was that learning curve and what kind of coaching or uh, programming or how did you get to where you are sure. to now you have two national titles? Yeah. So solid question. So yeah, the, the running kind of staple line, the sport is you can't outrun your misses. Now, I would argue, usually everyone says, it's like they're lying, like, you cannot run your misses. And usually I say, well, yeah, you can't if you have it really, really fast. I've, I've done it a few times, or fitness really, it's it, it, definitely a few times you can do it. But yes, correct. Overall, Lauren, like, the people who are going to win, and it's a very similar perspective to the CrossFit Games, like, the people who are going to win are going to be really good at, not really good, they're not going to be probably subject matter experts, because what happens when you get a, subject matter expert in one area is they usually are going to suck in another area. So a solid, um, cause I love examples. Examples of that is Jordan Troyon back in 2014 smashes the swim, sucks at the overhead squat in the next workout still places very well, but like he's a subject matter expert, right? He's an expert. He's too specialized in one area. And so for our sport, you're not going to see a guy who shows up who's phenomenal at shooting and sex at fitness is going to do very well. And then vice versa on the other polarization is you're not going to see someone like me who's really good at fitness and sex at shooting. You're going to have someone who's kind of in between. They're not going to be mediocre at both, but they're going to be probably above average at both. And maybe one area that might be a little bit better, but overall they're going to be probably average at both perspectives. Before I ask this question, just I have to say that Joe has let us know that now there is the strongest app available for yeah, Android. Android. Oh, yeah, so good. Seven. Sweet. Awesome. All right. So download it for uh, Android as well. How do you? How would you explain the season, the tactical game season, to somebody who knows nothing about the sport? Okay. So you guys, uh, I'm, yeah, this, you're, you're gonna get tired of hearing this, but uh, <laughs> your audience is CrossFit. Mm -hmm. well, my background yeah. is CrossFit. So let's compare it to that. The um, currently the owner, the current owner of the tactical games is a friend of mine. His name is Nick there. Lauren, you met him. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Both him and his fiance, awesome individuals. Um, the previous owner uh, was Jared Halbert, who still competes in the sport, got fourth behind me at nationals this year. Um, but the owner, the original owner and the person who started it, Tim, he actually was private security back in the day for drumroll, please, Greg Glassman. Oh, really? So our, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Our sport, 
Yeah, learn something new every day, Lauren. You should hang out with me more. Yeah. And so I know, I guess our so. sport <laughs> is very similar. Yeah. Our sport is going to be very similar in that aspect because it, it, it he kind of took tenets from our sport, right? The sport we all know mm-hmm. and love and said, okay, well, how do I take this but also get it you know, I'm not a huge fan of the word tactical because when it's not really super tactical, the name is stuck. But like, how do I take the CrossFit, the fitness perspective, and then somehow relate it back to a stress shooting environment where I can teach people like us, like people who are LE, like people who are in the mill uh, department and teach them to shoot better and move better when applied with fitness. And so because of that, the season looks very similar. Now, obviously, the CrossFit Games um, finalizes in end of July, beginning of August. Ours is a different perspective. We're going to end in the end of November, mostly because of winter time. Um, but to lead into that looks kind of the same. Um, we don't have the open quarterfinals, semifinals. We mainly have, let's take out the open completely and just say we only had regionals. And that's what it looks like. Right. So we usually have, uh, I think this upcoming year, we're going to have 11 regional events. Those events are going to be held across the continental United States. Um and you can go attend those events and the top five in, I'm going to make it really easy for you guys. The top five in some divisions, um, Nationals doesn't have every division there, just like the same as the CrossFit Games doesn't have every division that competes there. Um, but the top five in every division automatically gets an invite out to the Tactical Games Nationals or CrossFit Games. And those invites actually do roll down. So it's kind of similar to like sanctionals back in the day. So mm. If I go to a regional event in March uh, this year in Arizona or wherever, and you guys all go, because I was already podium, I don't need an invite to next year's nationals. So if you want to say Tommy goes there and plays sixth, he's automatically got an invite because I've already I've already, I've already got a slot. So it just rolls down from okay. their perspective. Yep. So it's very similar in that aspect. And it's just you can anybody can sign up, right? You just get the gear show. Correct. Yeah, there's no – Okay. No requirement to sign up for regionals. Um, they do have, they do run, uh, the Tackle Games company does run some events that are, um, they call them skirmishes, um, pretty much, where it's kind of like an on-ramp course. So if Tommy's like, hey, man, I want to do one, but like, you know, I'm probably not going to show up to my first CrossFit competition not having done a CrossFit class before, which I totally understand. Then they have one-day events that are held around the continent of the United States that are just one-day events. They're not a competition. It's mostly fun. It's very teaching-oriented. So let's say I was running it. We'd have very similar stages that we would run at a tackle games, but it's super laid back. It's, you know, we're not here to score anything. We're here to mainly to teach. Whereas for if you go to a regional event, you're there to compete. I mean, there are going to be some um, ROs, some judges there that will help you out, but it's mainly meant to, like, showcase what you practice okay. uh-huh. leading to that event. And then, so kind of taking that a step further in terms of what takes place at the actual event, how is the competition actually structured, scored? What does it look like? You know, I guess in this comparison, like, you show up to a CrossFit event, you're going to have multiple scored events, a mixture of CrossFit movements, um, and in many ways – whatever, I've, if we do points for placing, lowest score wins, you know, if we do a, a point adjusted system, then, you know, highest score wins. Yeah. Yep. Good question. So, um, it scored, um, I, I think the, the actual term Z score is actually wrong, but it scored, I always use the example as, as scored on a curve. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go to a competition. We're going to do a stage. Let's say, just make it really, really easy. We're going to go run a mile for time. That's not a, that's a bad example, but I'll make it simple. We're going to run a mile for time and the four of us are going to do it. I'm going to go off and run this mile. Let's say I run it in eight minutes, okay? I'm going to run it in eight minutes. Let's say Lauren runs it in seven, Tommy, you run it in six, and Sean, Thank you run you. it in five. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, Sean, yeah. what Because I mean, people look at me and they say, that guy's a runner. <laughs> He's a runner, boy. She's a runner. So Sean obviously won the workout. Now, in CrossFit days past – and I really, this is a really good idea. I wish CrossFit would do this because I actually really like the scoring. Mm. But in CrossFit days past, you know, at the games, Sean gets 100 points. Tommy gets up with a 95. Uh, Lauren gets a, a 90. And I get a 90 or 80 something. Or I'll say 85. You sometimes it's 86 depending upon the point spread. How we score is we base upon a curb. So it's always set upon the person that wins it and sets the pace, right? So Sean gets 100 points because he smashed it and he's got the, 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 best, the best time. And then all of our scores from there on out are always based upon Sean. 
So Sean, essentially take his five minutes, divide that by eight. That's how many points I get out of a possible 100. I don't know if top of my head what that is, but let's say it's 70 points. But I got four. So in CrossFit, I would probably get like, you know, 85, 86 points. But now I've got 70 because it's based upon your score. So it does benefit the specialist to a degree in some aspects. Like if you know there's a workout that I can go out there and smash, then boy, oh boy, you better go out there and gap mm-hmm. everyone. Because if you've got the opportunity to make up points, that can absolutely happen. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the downside to it, which is ups and downs to all the ways to score it, of course, is like I happened to actually this piss past weekend. The gentleman who got second place behind me, um, Aaron Clark, really awesome guy. Uh, I went into leading in day three in points. Um, and some of the events, he beat me at two events um, in the final day out of, a, out of four total events. But the problem was he beat me by like one second on an event and like one rep on another event. And so in the grand scheme of things, like if it was CrossFit, boy gets five points, 95 points Mm -hmm. for me twice, right? So that's a 10 point uh, spread there. Instead, because I only beat him by like one second in an eight minute event, I, he got a hundred points and I got like 99.3. So it doesn't really, you have to like go out there and actually win and beat them by something. So I actually kind of like that scoring. I believe, um, uh, Crash Crucible, the Crucible yeah. event. There's they been some competitions. The that, yeah. They did it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, and and then, so one of the uh, go ahead, Tommy. I was to say, but uh, so with that in mind, the, the <laughs> events, like, what do the events themselves actually look like? So you sure. running, that's a great point. So yeah. they, yeah, so they're always based upon every event. That's we talked about the scoring, right? So scoring's up here. That's our. How do we figure out who's won the thing? Below that, every event will be either two different options. It'll be, um, it's kind of similar to CrossFit. It'll either be time-based or point-based, where point-based, we can be synonymous in the CrossFit realm to an AMRAP perspective, right? We To this day, we have not done a weight-based workout like we would do with the one rep max because it's not really our forte to a sport um, for at least this sport. But we do either, again, time or points. So how that breaks down is we would do a workout, let's say it's um, – I've crossed so I got to make it simple here. Uh, <laughs> no, no, give, give us the actual thing. Give, 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 give us an event. Tell us what an event. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Uh, well, I don't want to make it overly complicated because you just get lost. So I'm going to make it like like one in. So, okay, just say, now we shoot two guns, right? We shoot pistol, rifle. For this sake of this argument, and we'll probably use this example throughout the rest of the conversation so we can always kind of come back to this as our kind of our given. Let's all make up a workout and we'll use it for the rest of this, this podcast. It makes it easy for everybody is let's say we do, um, we got, we're going to use only a pistol. Okay. The pistol's on us. It's not hot. It's not loaded, but we do have magazines for shooting down range, um, on us, but the pistol again is not loaded. Let's say the, the firing line's way over there. It's like 50 yards away and we're 50 yards over here. And we have a sandbag, 150 pound sandbag. So three, two, one, go me and my four other best friends are going to do the same workout. We're going to put the sandbag over our shoulder five times. One, two, three, four, five. On the fifth rep, we're going to grab it in the stress carry position and take it 50 yards. We're going to drop it, and then we're going to shoot our pistol for a specified amount of rounds. Let's say it's, and we can get into that in a second. Let's say we shoot nine pistol rounds on target. Um, And then after we shoot our nine rounds on target, we will make sure our pistol is cleared. We'll holster our pistol. We'll stress carry that bag back to the firing line. I'm sorry, the firing line. The start line, 50 yards behind us. We'll drop the sandbag, and that's one round. Let's say we do that three times through. So then, I, again, I would do one, two, three, four, five. Stress carry, shoot, stress carry. That's round two. Then one, two, three, four, five. Stress carry, shoot my final magazine of pistol. Clear it, of course. Stress carry it back, and that's when time stops. So that's, a, that's an example of a time-based workout. So how that would work is I, of course, at some point, past the finish line. There, there are time caps, but let's say I finish it under a time cap. Let's say I pass the finish line in 10 minutes. After everyone is done, all the other, because we compete five wide, so all the other four guys in my squad are completed shooting and the line is declared cold, we'll send judges down range to pull targets. Now we have targets that we shoot. Um, uh, let's see if I can draw something real fast. So we essentially shoot like... Um, you're used to like seeing targets like this for like shooting competitions. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're cardboard backers. We actually shoot targets that are uh, stapled on them. Think like, um, this is my drawing skills. Think like we had this big piece of paper stapled mm-hmm. on um, 
the cardboard backer. And what I'm looking for in this target is I have three shapes. I have three ugly, ugly, really ugly circles. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm looking for is remember I said, Hey, you have three mags and we're going to shoot nine pistol each round. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for nine hits of my pistol in this circle and nine in this circle and nine in this circle. Now, if you don't get one in the circle, that's okay. You don't have another round to try and replace it. You have a limited amount of rounds, but if you miss a shot, Let's say you drop nine, you drop one over here on the side over here. That's just a 10 second penalty when you're done. So you have your raw time. Took you 10 minutes, like I said. You have your raw time. 